Well, sometimes in the wee hours of the morning, I philosophize with myself about the true meaning of Bitcoin. Is it nothing more than everything we don't understand about money combined with everything we don't understand about computers? Or is it something else far less cynical? Whatever the answer, today's ETF contest is a heavyweight bout between two Bitcoin-focused investments. It's Grayscale versus ProShares. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Stick around. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. Glad to have you along with us for the ride. If you're new to the program, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Be sure you don't miss any of our timely episodes. Also, if you have a certain ETF battle that you'd like to see, hit the comment section below or our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. Be sure to give us your exact ETF ticker symbols. And if the ETF battle that you request makes it onto the show, guess what? You'll win a choice, your choice of an ETF Battles coffee mug or a shirt, so make it good. The speed of Bitcoin's ascent has been stunning. It took Bitcoin only 12 years to hit $1 trillion market cap. Uh, by comparison, it took Amazon.com and Google more than 20 years to hit that same $1 trillion threshold. Today's ETF battles was requested by AC, along with several other viewers who demanded to see a Bitcoin ETF showdown. Look, for the sake of not causing any riots, we will appease your demands. And we've got Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, going up against the newly launched ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF, BITO, B-I-T-O, helping us to judge today's high stakes contest is the illustrious duo. We've got Dave Natig at ETF Trends and Eric Balchunas at Bloomberg. Guys, welcome back to the show. Great to see you. Thanks for having us. Great to be here. Be sure to check out Eric's brand new ETF Master Chef series on trillions at Bloomberg. It's quite excellent. When are you going to send us an ETF MasterChef apron? Are we going to get any of those? I probably couldn't swing aprons, but I might be able to get spatula. Let, let me work on that. And I okay. will definitely send you one. By the way, I got my ETF battle shirt. I don't have it on right now, but I wear it with pride, Ron. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Well, our four battle categories are cost, exposure strategy, performance, and then our mystery category. Now, for mystery, that's where our judges get to pick that single factor or multiple factors that they feel are material to today's showdown. And I've got the scorekeeping chores. We're going to go through each one of these battle categories one at a time. Our judges are going to pick their ETF winner in each respective category. They can also opt for a split decision, protest, or nominate another ETF as a wild card. It's up to them. So let's begin with the first category, which is cost. Eric, please get us started. Oh, this is so tough because of the imperfections in both products. But this is what many people are dealing with right now in deciding between these two imperfect products. So I got to give this to Bitto, I think, simply because the expense ratio is half. It's 95 bips versus 1%. And the spread is a basic versus point. 2%. 2%. 2%. Sorry, Dave. 2%. Right. So um, and the, uh, the, they both basically traded a penny spread. Um, I think the penny spread for either of them is a huge advantage over some uh, uh, Bitcoin exchanges, which are, can be quite costly to do transactions. So the penny spread is big for both. But uh, So let's call that a wash. Got to go to the um, ex expense ratio. The only, the only thing, and I'm sure we'll get to this, is with Bitto, you kind of have a, a cost that really isn't a cost, which is um, the rolling of futures. Ah, you're getting and ahead of yourself. I know, but it, it's so hard because when I think of cost, I sometimes factor that in. For the sake of this and not stealing thunder from the rest of the program, I'll go with Bitto based on those two metrics. Thank you, Eric. Let's shift to Dave. How do you see it in terms of cost? It's really straightforward here. I mean, it's just cheaper to buy Bitto. Uh, there's, it's also better. We'll get to all those reasons. But yeah, it's just plain cheaper to buy and hold Bitto than it is to buy and hold GBTC. Next up is exposure strategy. So Dave, you're still up. Give us your take. Yeah, well, this is where these are radically different approaches. Now, they fit in the same bucket because you're still trying to get Bitcoin exposure. That's the reason you're going after either one of the, these things. They're both fails at doing it well because you can't get direct Bitcoin exposure in an exchange traded product. The SEC just won't allow it. So there's two different approaches here to not getting it right. 
The one way is GBTCs, which is really just a pink sheet corporation is all it is that's putting a bunch of Bitcoin on the balance sheet. There's a creation process. There's no redemption process. So it trades like a closed end fund, but it's not even regulated like a cl closed end fund. It's a pink sheet trust. Now it's SEC reporting. It's obviously being, being pretty well run. But as an investor, you're buying into just perpetual premium and discount swings. It's currently trading at about a 20% discount to the value of the Bitcoin it holds. On the other hand, you've got Bitto, which is investing in Bitcoin futures, trying to track that first month futures already can't because it's too big. So it's first and second month futures. Give us another three or four days and we'll probably be inventing new months that aren't even trading on CME, <laughs> given how much money is flowing into this thing. But then you have the futures roll problem, which any commodities investor is pretty familiar with. You, the future always seems to cost more than today. So you're buying high for tomorrow and you're selling low today, it tends to be a bad strategy and you tend to lose a little bit of money. Over the last year, it's been about 10, 12% that's cost you so far this year uh, in that kind of rolling strategy. Where do I pick the right winner here? I'm going to go with Bitto because at least it's a regulated market that you can track. You understand what the rules are to get in and out. GBTC is a bit of a roach motel. The money goes in, it never comes out. Well, very well said. Thank you very much, Dave. Eric, how do you see it in terms of exposure strategy between these two tickers? Yeah, everything Dave said, I completely agree with. So I can only accent some of those things. Uh, one piece of data I will give you is with Bitto, look, there's, there's going to be a roll. But if Bitto goes across the curve, that roll might not be as bad. But either way, they both have a third element, you know, and you have to deal with that third element. In Bitto, the case is the roll. In GBTC, it's the fact that it trades at a premium discount. Now, GBTC, if you bought it a year ago, you trailed Bitcoin by 150 percentage points. That's like 10 years of rolling. So I, that said, it's possible people pile into GBTC for whatever reason. Let's say they, they assume it might convert down the road. You might outperform Bitcoin by 50 percentage points over the next year. Uh, so I would say that for really, really... Um, I don't know what the word is, like hardcore uh, traders who just like exotic trades, GBTC presents an interesting trade idea. I think for most people, though, I think Ubito is a little more reliable. That third element of rolling is at least you kind of can bank on, you know, maybe 5 to 10% a year. Our analyst thinks it will go down over time because uh, there is really no storage cost like in oil. So with the, all the ARB that's going to come in, it should all uh, really help out. Um, and it's regulated, right? So um, the only question with Bitto is it, it could hit these position limits, and it's pretty much has its hands tied. I'm not sure what it will hold if it if it runs into limits, and it may run into limits, as Dave said, by the weekend. And what is it? Could, it can, I don't. It can't buy other Bitcoin ETFs. It can't buy the new futures ETFs. It can't buy uh, GBTC. Um, I don't know if it can buy. The only thing I don't know, and Dave may know, is whether it could use swaps, but. I did not find any swaps in the prospectus. When it said it could hit limits, that, that's it. The language never pivoted to here's what we can hold. They took all that out. So that's a pretty big wild card. I still give it to Bitto, but with all, that, all those caveats. And I will say one final thing, wild card time. If, I was, if my mom said she wanted to go to Bitto, I may actually move a director to the mutual fund, BTCFX. Because nobody wants to invest in mutual funds. That one does the same thing as Bitto, but no one cares about it. So you could probably live in that for years and get exactly the front month. With so no the, position the, limits. Yes. So the mutual fund is ironically like a hidden gem right now. And I, would, I think that's a fair wild card play here. Um, Eric, by the way, what was that uh, nomination for wild card? The Pro Funds Bitcoin Strategy Mutual Fund, BTCFX. Yeah, it's sort of like the prequel to Bitto. Got it. That, that nobody watched. Like, it's the Force Awakens. No, no, it's the. Um, <laughs> what was the the prequel? Um, the Phantom Menace. The, it's the Phantom Menace of that, Bitto. That's a great uh, description of it, actually. Yeah, and like honestly, though, it's a, it's a. I, I think it's a, it, and I don't think anyone will ever buy it. No. No, but it's, it, boy, if you ever wanted a proof point about why it matters to be an ETF instead of a mutual fund. Yeah, yeah. I sure. mean, yeah. That one have that 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 thing probably will never have to deal with this. I think so. Uh, for your choice for exposure strategy, Eric, just reiterate that one more time. Bitto with the wild card of BTCFX. Perfect. 
Thank you very much. I got you down. Now we move to performance. And uh, Eric, you're still up. So how do you see it in terms of performance between uh, these two products? And of course, Bitto has limited performance history, but uh, give us your take anyway. If you were to put money into Bitto or GBTC today, and we look at a five-year holding period, I, I bet GBTC outperforms simply because at some point, it probably will be allowed to either merge into a, a fund that Grayscale gets approved or it gets to convert. And that 20% discount or 15% discount will immediately go away. So that's free money right there. And it will have tracked Bitcoin because it holds it. Whereas Bitto will have to deal with this roll cost. There's no chance of Bitto outperforming Bitcoin. It's just not going to happen. It will, if anything, lag a little bit. So I, I would say that if you're really into sort of exotic trades and, and, I don't know, things that are interesting, I don't know, GBTC probably, if I had to bet, will perform better in five years. That said, there's a big variable. Will the SEC approve it uh, or let, you know, let 33 Act funds uh, you know, go out there? Uh, because other 33 Act funds would have to be approved first. And there's, there's a chance it may never get to convert. So you have a chance that it, it won't work. So with that caveat, I think because most people aren't going in for five years, I got to go for Bitto because the correlation is excellent. If you look at the mutual fund, the prequel I just mentioned, it's only missed in spot by 90 bips over two and a half months. You can count on Bitto to track pretty well day to day, week to week, month to month, and maybe even a year or two. But, you know, again, I, I, I would just recommend probably just more short term holding periods for, for, for Bitto. And GBTC, ironically, could actually be a better long-term investment, even though it's got this, these, this really quirky situation going on. Um, but that said, I got to go to Bitto because of uh, some of the other things we mentioned. But I don't know. It's, uh, it's complicated for me. Thank you, Eric. Dave, how do you see it in terms of performance? I love the idea of doing forward projected performance based on potential regulatory changes. That's a new one for me. Uh, like for those of us that want to live in like the actual real world, um, like we can look at the numbers year to date and they speak for themselves. We get GBTC is up 61%, which sounds great, except that Bitcoin's up 128%. Uh, and the front end futures, if you were rolling them, were up 118%. So I, I know which one of those three I'd rather be in. I can't be in 128, but I can be in the 118. That's the ITO. So I think that's going to win the performance argument. And to counter the argument about the future potential, I'm actually not sure that it's ever going to be approved. I, it may actually be more likely that it gets taken out, right? There's been a lot of buying of the under of the of the fund itself from big institutions. At some point, they may just get a tender offer and basically take that fund out of existence. That is one way that one could get paid out if one invested in it, but it makes it a difficult portfolio asset. Time out. If that happened, though, you're twenty percent. You get made whole. You would get made whole, yeah. But I'm just saying you could end up in a lockup. That period. would outperform Bitto. It's <laughs> it would. I mean, I'm just saying, like Yeah, I, so but that but basically that's just buying closed end funds at a discount and saying, look, an they must come back yeah, to fair value I someday. So I, agree. I and and as far as the roll costs going forward, I'm actually with Eric's team. I actually think that the contango and the Bitcoin futures curve is going to collapse over time. Um, there's really no reason for that carry trade to just sit there and exist at a big fat number, particularly as more and more people realize you can kind of book that arbitrage without being an AP, right? You can go ahead and sell short one thing and buy the other, and you don't have to wait for the ability to create and redeem shares. Those markets will converge. So I think the contango will get squeezed out, which will make it track Bitcoin even better. That takes us next to the mystery battle category where our judges get to pick that single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So Dave, you're still up. Give us your mystery battle category. What is it and who wins it? I'll make it quick. I, I To me, it's a structure. I'm not a fan of the pink sheet trust way of getting access. It's nothing against Grayscale. My friend Matt Hogan runs a bunch of these things at Bitwise too, right? The, I, it's nothing about the people involved. I don't think it's a great structure for most investors. I think it's difficult for most people to understand. It doesn't have the investor protections most advisors are certainly used to getting when they're buying an ETF that's re regulated under the 40 Act. BATO has all the flaws we've talked about. It's investing in the futures market, but you know what? It's going to do it well, and it's going to do it in a predictable and structured way. Very good. How do you see it, Eric, in terms of your mystery battle category? What is it and who wins it? 
Um, yeah, just quickly off Dave, I really agree with that. Uh, the idea that this is backed by the SEC and, you know, Gensler really, he custom made this. He said, this is what I want. So he's kind of going to be on, you know, some should be on your side here uh, as you invest. Like, let's say there's some issues with this or that. He should be uh, some, you know, act, he, there should be some SEC support potentially. I like that. GBTC seems like it's floating out there. Um, my mystery category, though, is options. Uh, you can't get them on GBTC. You can on Bitto. And let's say if you are trading, um, whether you're an institution looking to hedge or just a retail trader looking to have fun uh, and you know swing for the fences, options are, are really a, a, a fun way and a, a helpful way, as Dave Nadig would say, to sculpt returns. Um, and I think the options market on Bitto is going to get very big very quickly. And that's something you don't get on GBTC. Great point. Wow. That was really a subliminal point. Thank you for bringing that out, Eric. So we'll give our judges now a final opportunity to weigh in and give us their overall battle winner. And they can also, Eric's already nominated a wild card. So whatever they got in their back pocket, if they want to bring it out, they can. Let's uh, give Eric your final chance to weigh in. Uh, Bitto, I think for me, would win this uh, because of the regulation, the, uh, the expense ratio is cheaper, the role won't be that bad. Um, again, with the caveat that, that it's going to hit limits, but keep in mind there could be other futures ETFs launched too that, that don't have those limits and trunk the front So it's, Anyway, I, I just think this is all where the money's going to go anyway. I think GB, I don't blame Grayscale for trying and, and getting this product out. Um, you know, they, they did what they did, and, uh, but the, the, I think Bitto will win for me, with the wild card being that because Bitto is ETFs are so popular and the limit positions could be hit, BTCFX, the mutual fund, probably will just sit there totally ignored, but perfectly tracking the front month contract and is it slightly a, a hidden gem. So if you, if you just can deal with having a mutual fund instead of an ETF, um, there's something to be said about using that instead. Good point. Thank you very much. So Dave, your final chance to weigh in on your overall battle winner, give it to us. Yeah, it's bit, it's bit of, of course, for the same reasons that Eric just said. Uh, I put out one caveat, though. You know, I'm, while I'm giving this the win, I think there's probably a product we haven't seen yet that's going to be a much better product, whether that's just one of the several futures products that are going to be coming out that may tweak their strategy in some interesting ways or may just simply cut the cost. Uh, those may end up being better products for those reasons. So definitely something you should keep your eyes open. And of course, what we all really want is a GLD for business. Bitcoin, one that just actually holds physical Bitcoin. We don't have that one yet, but boy, when that one hits, all these things go to the dustbin. Well, thank you, judges, for your timely analysis. And according to my battle scorecard, this is a clean sweep for Bitto with our judges agreeing in all categories. And wow, I didn't think it would go down like this, but you guys nailed some awesome, awesome points. And really, you know, some of the key takeaways, deciding which Bitcoin ETF or product to choose, it's got to be guided by your personal preferences. If you're okay with that synthetic derivatives approach, then the futures-based Bitcoin ETFs are probably okay. On the other hand, if you're a perista who prefers the actual coins in the portfolio, then you're probably going to want to wait for a Bitcoin solution that A, holds the coins, and B, proves that they can closely track the price of Bitcoin without the massive discounts and premiums to NAV. Great job today to Eric and Dave for breaking it down. Guys, well done. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Rod. Well, trust me, this is not going to be the last Bitcoin ETF battle we do, mainly because this is becoming one of those overcrowded ETF categories that resembles the Home Depot parking lot. And it's going to require thoughtful insight as well as discernment for making the right choice. So again, our judges helped you do that. And if you'd like to see a certain ETF battle facing off, let us know what those ticker symbols are. Give it to us in our comments section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.